Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the AAF Knowledge uh, Base. My name is Don Ayres. I'm the Technical Manager for PASMA. Today I'm going to be talking about the recent PASMA review into fall protection on mobile working towers, which was undertaken by PASMA in consultation with the HSE in 2010-2011. I'd like to tell you a little bit about both the process that we undertook and about the conclusions that we came to as a result of that work. First, something about PASMA, Prefabricated Access Suppliers and Manufacturers Association, formed in 1974, and it represents the mobile tower industry in the UK, and it's the recognized training provider for mobile towers we work setting standards and working with the regulatory authorities and we publish a range of information to assist people in the use of mobile towers. So what was the reason for carrying out the review and what was it about? Well first of all within mobile towers there are two processes recommended by PASMA and the HSE for assembling and dismantling. And they've been in place since 2005 with the work at height regulations. These recommendations were developed, these recommendations were developed in consultation with the HSE and they're detailed in HSE guidance CIS 10. And the two processes are through the trap, 3T, and advanced guardrail, AGR. I'd like to um, show you a short film which explains how, first of all, how the advanced guardrail system works. You can see here that the person here is using what's defined as an integral type advanced guardrail. An integral type advanced guardrail stays in its original place in the structure it's not moved, and it actually forms part of the structure of the tower. There is another type of advanced guardrail, which progresses up the tower and is replaced with conventional components. But the new type of advanced guardrail that's available now is the integral type. You can see that the, the guardrail goes on in advance of the platform. The obvious advantage of this is that the person has not actually stood on the platform before the guardrail is in place. Now I'd like to show you a short film which actually shows a person building a tower using the 3T method. In the 3T method, the guardrails go on from a safe position on the platform. So the tower is constructed and you'll see that instead of having integral type frames which form part of the structure, the structure is made up of a system of braces and end frames And the person building the tower follows an instruction manual which shows the layout of the braces and frames. So the platform is going into position, but at this time, there's no guardrails in place.
So the person now building the tower, he, ascend, he ascends the tower, and from a protected position within the trap door, he fits the guard rails. establishes the protection to the tower. So that's a little bit about how the two methods work. And you may have heard various, uh, you've probably seen various information that's been around about these two systems but they've both been covered in CIS 10 since 2005 and in PASMA training. Let's um, have a look now at some of the issues that uh, were considered in the review process um, and take you through that process so you can see uh, what it was in the words of the HSE, it was a very wide-ranging review and I would suggest very robust. Section of CIS 10 which covers AGR systems states that temporary advanced guardrails provide collective fall protection. Section of CIS 10 which covers the 3T method states that this allows the person erecting and dismantling the tower to position themselves at minimum risk during the installation and removal of guardrails to the next level. In 2009, there were a number of new products that came out, and these were principally the integral type advanced guardrail. So they remain in position on the tower and form part of the structure. That's a key point. As a result of these new products coming onto, mar onto the market, there was a reported increase in their application. People were more interested in using them than maybe there had been in previous advanced guardrail systems. And as a, as a result of that, there was a, a call from a small number of, of, of the PASMA members that maybe we should look at our uh, code of practice and our training, our best practice, about how towers should be assembled. It also coincided with the fact that uh, CIS 10 and PASMA uh, 3D methodology had been established for five years then, so it was a good time to look at it in any case. So following that call, PASMA Council requested that Manufacturers Committee, Technical Committee, investigate the comparative operational and safety aspects. And as part of that, what we were going to look at was the feasibility and practicality of including both methods within training. And obviously health and safety, who we work in close consultation with, were to be involved and other relevant stakeholders in a consultation process. This wasn't just PASMA coming out there and saying what we believed. This is asking the people who actually at the sharp end what their thoughts were as well. So in December 2009, right at the start of the process, we went out to PASMA members and we said, OK, what are the issues that really we should be addressing in this review? And there were quite a lot of answers. Some they were quite wide ranging, some they were quite conflicting, but they all needed investigating. And uh, an interim report was published later in 2010, which summarized all these submissions and recommended a number of actions and investigations, how we should look at these things and the way to go about it. And these were, all these, these actions were carried out in 2010. So this is all about the process of how we carried out our review. We carried out practical workshops where there was a physical assessment of the processes 
of the assembly and dismantling using both 3T and advanced guardrail. And we filmed all these for future reference. In the series of technical workshops, we considered the outcome of the physical assessment and we considered things such as compatibility, i.e. the constructing of towers made from different components, tower stiffness, the rigidity of the tower, and other points that were highlighted in the interim report. We also carried out training workshops where we discussed it's very easy to think that it's it's easy to build something like this into training but it can be practically it can be quite challenging to try and get into a training course a coverage of a range of different systems and methods during the the process of carrying out the review one of the issues that came to light was the manual handling issues with both 3T and advanced guardrail. And uh, it was agreed with HSE that we should carry out research at the Health and Safety Laboratories Buxton into these issues. And they used some quite sophisticated techniques and a, a range of techniques to look at the manual handling. We use computer modeling and we use various systems of manual handling analysis to look at, in both methods, the placing of the guardrails, the protection around the platform. I said at the beginning that we talked about that we did this in consultation. So the next part of the process, having gathered all this information, was to tell people what we'd found up to that stage. So we created a briefing document that was published, and it was circulated to a wide range of, of bodies which have particular interest in the use of mobile towers. And it told them all about what we'd found, and then asked them for their feedback. And that feedback was taken into the work, and we considered where we should go from there. And that's culminated really in the final report with conclusions, which you can now, you'll be able to download from the uh, PASMA website. And just take you through the conclusions in brief. PASMA and the HSE confirmed that AGR and 3T processes continue to provide recognized safe methods of work. So that's both processes, AGR and 3T, continue to provide recognized safe methods of work. The conclusion of the technical committee, the PASMA technical committee, is that when used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, always very relevant, both methods continue to provide an acceptable safe method of work with the AGR systems providing comprehensive fall protection and the 3T method using conventional components to minimize the risk of a fall. But I'll take you back. Both methods continue to be acceptable. The work that was carried out at HSL, very detailed, found that with correct manual handling techniques and body positioning, the risks are kept with intolerable limits in the AGR and 3T processes. Um, one of the particular issues that was noted was that persons of smaller stature need to consider their manual handling techniques in both processes, and that there may be the need to use additional components for those persons. So they may need additional braces in the 3T or additional platforms in advanced guard roll. As part of that research, uh, 
we also examined the positions. Now, in the 3T method, there are very different people have used different positions for some time. Some people prefer to stand on the rungs, and some people prefer to be seated actually on the platform. And HSL carried out quite detailed review of this and, follow, and looked at all the health and safety aspects and con came to the conclusion that actually the seated position overall is preferable. And that's something that was of great interest to PASMA and it's something that we may look at in the future as to how we get that message across. So, PASMA and HSE confirm that um, the principles regarding use of both processes, which is given in CIS 10, are still current. So if you're using HSE guidance for mobile towers, the current document still holds true. Both 3T and AGR are still both acceptable methods and they're still current. Training Committee of PASMA concluded that it's not necessary for current card holders to retrain. This is quite an important step. It's quite an important thing for PASMA card holders. The current content is sufficient to cover you for the use of the new type products because it's always covered advanced guardrails and basically it's always said you need to read the manual and the manual will cover you on all those new types of integral guardrail. Because part of the PASMA training process is to teach you about the process of, of how you behave and, how you, and, the, and it gives you the ability to follow those manufacturer's instructions. However, the training committee did decide that we could actually enhance the training by giving a little more coverage to the new type of integral advanced guardrails, and that will be happening. Training committee will be considering the training course, and we will be looking at how we can in, uh, ad, uh, enhance the course to cover those particular types of products. And the next stage, really, is what we do with CIS 10. Do we need to amend it? Well, we don't need to amend it tremendously because the content is still correct. What we may do in discussion with the HSE is to decide if we need to put specific emphasis on new type products, just to bring it up to date. But that's something that we'll need to discuss with HSE. So in summary, PASMA and HSE confirm that both processes, 3T and AGR, continue to be acceptable. HSL research confirms that both processes are considered acceptable. PASMA card holders don't need to retrain until their card expires. And PASMA training is to be enhanced with increased theoretical and practical content to cover the new type integral AGR. Thank you for listening today. If you've got further questions, then I'll be available in the PASMA stand at the rear. But if there's, so if there's any particular aspects you'd like to talk about, please come and see me. Be pleased to talk to you.